Hey guys, Heidi Preep here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about on-again, off-again relationships and what that's like from the perspective of an anxiously attached person or someone using anxious attachment strategies. So last week I put out a video about fearful avoidance and the tendency to have on-again, off-again relationships, but I definitely don't think that that tendency is exclusive to fearful avoidance. I think that anyone who is insecurely attached is familiar with the on again, off again game. And usually the reason why they're familiar with that game is because in insecure attachment relationships, so relationships that are comprised of two people who have anything but a secure attachment style, you tend to have one person who is more anxious and one person who is more avoidant. Or if you have, let's say, two people who are fearful avoidant, one will take on the more anxious role and one will take on the more avoidant role. And the problem is that when you have an anxious avoidant relationship in any capacity, both people tend to struggle with stating their needs and wants explicitly and clearly, as well as stating their boundaries explicitly and clearly. So what often happens is that there is a lot of things that go unsaid in these dynamics. You might have one person who fawns over the other when they're feeling stressed or dysregulated, and you might have another who pulls away when they're feeling dysregulated. And what happens when we're chronically operating from that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn system is that it feels really difficult to tune in and figure out what we actually need in partnerships, what our wants are, what our needs are, what our mutual future plans are. So what often happens is that all of these unmet needs, all of these unspoken expectations, all of these boundaries that are not being set or not being followed in these relationships lead to premature breakups. So the couple might not necessarily be ready to break up, they might still have feelings for each other, but because there isn't the proper communication and the proper self-regulation skills on behalf of both parties, usually, to work through conflict in a productive way, instead, usually the more avoidant leaning person, but it could be either, will initiate a breakup when things start to feel overwhelming. However, if that breakup is initiated at a point in the relationship where both people still have feelings for each other, or there is a lot of unfinished business, it's not uncommon for insecurely attached couples to gravitate back towards each other and to give the dynamic another shot. Now, if you are the anxious leaning individual in this dynamic, it's more likely, again, not necessarily guaranteed to be the case, but more likely, that you were not the one who initiated the breakup. Often it is avoidant leaning people who are more likely to initiate premature breakups because their attachment system gets very overwhelmed at the thought of needing to set boundaries, at the thought of needing to meet other people's needs, at the thought of feeling incompetent in their own ability to either set boundaries or meet another person's needs or realistically find the balance between those two. So you're likely to see the avoidant leaning person pulling back and the anxious leaning person not wanting that to happen. The more anxious leaning person is more likely to be the one who advocates for the relationship to continue and to be more willing to jump back into the dynamic at a future point in time should the avoidant leaning person show interest in doing that. But what I wanna use this video to do is to encourage you to take a pause if you are the anxious leaning person in an on again, off again dynamic before going right back into the same relationship and really figure out, is this right for me? Is this relationship meeting my needs? And if not, am I only going back into it to avoid being alone and learning to meet my own needs? Because at the end of the day, we can heal in or out of relationships, but if we are using relationships as a band-aid to meet our own needs and as a way of avoiding doing that for ourselves, we're gonna end up in the same cycles over and over and over again, right? So this video is not about encouraging you not to go back to an ex-partner, but it is about learning to do so consciously if that's the choice you make and learning which issues you're gonna have to work through and overcome both as a couple and individually in order for that getting back together process to properly work. So these are five questions I encourage you to ask yourself and really sit with and spend some time on if you're considering getting back together with an ex and you identify as having an anxious attachment style. So question one, and this is the most important question for both of you to ask yourselves and each other, is what led to the last breakup and is that issue now resolved or do we have a different strategy for handling that problem going forward? So 
If the last breakup happened because, let's say your ex was feeling overwhelmed and they pulled back and they were unable to communicate their boundaries or their needs, or you were trying to manipulate or get your needs met covertly without explicitly stating what they were, is that not a problem anymore? Have one or both of you learned new communication skills? Are you able to sit down now and talk openly about what went wrong the last time? and how you're going to tackle that problem differently in the future. And if you are able to sit down and have that conversation, are you satisfied with the solutions that you come up with? Do you feel like you're both participating equally in that discussion and that you're both ready to do the work? For you, it's probably going to be around self-regulation and learning to meet more of your own needs. And for the more avoidant leaning person, it's likely going to be around speaking up more and communicating clearly about what their boundaries are but it could be a range of things, right? No two relationships are the same and there's gonna be different challenges and different things that every couple experiences completely uniquely. But before choosing to re-enter a relationship dynamic, you really wanna make sure you're clear on what it was that didn't work the first time around. And you wanna make sure there's an answer that both of you are clear on and satisfied with about what's gonna be different this time around. Because otherwise you are setting yourself up to go right back into the same cycle and experience that same pain all over again. Question two to ask yourself before getting back together with an ex is, is this in any way an act of self-abandonment? So what I mean by that is, are you leaving any part of your true self at the door in order to get back into this relationship? Are there needs that you know were not met in this relationship and you know you're not going to feel comfortable advocating for yourself and speaking up for yourself for this time around? Are there trauma responses or attachment wounds that tend to get really activated in this relationship that you've not yet found ways to self-regulate around? And again, it's not to say that none of this stuff can be worked through in relationship, but if you don't have a plan to work through those things in the relationship, is it all that kind to yourself to go back into this dynamic knowing you'll be putting yourself in an emotional firing line? And that doesn't necessarily mean, by the way, that it's your partner doing that emotional firing. A lot of the time, when we choose to go into dynamics that we know trigger us and we don't have strategies around dealing with our own triggers, it's like we're putting ourselves in our own firing line, right? And sometimes to visualize this more clearly, I like to ask myself if I had a four-year-old daughter or a very young child I was responsible for taking care of? Would I let this daughter go live with this person who I'm thinking of entering into a relationship with? And if so, what protective measures would I need to make sure I had in place to take care of this child even when things get difficult, even when that partner is not available for a period of time, even when we are fighting, right? What resources do I have that I can draw from to keep my inner child safe in this dynamic? And if the answer is, I would not allow a four-year-old anywhere near a person like this or a dynamic like this, that's probably a pretty good indication that you are failing to protect the more vulnerable parts of yourself by entering into this dynamic, that you have not yet developed the inner parenting skills you need to be able to navigate that dynamic clearly. Your inner child wants to be their full authentic selves everywhere they go, and it's your responsibility to make sure you are setting up a safe environment for them to do that, right? So if you know that you are entering into a relationship where you choose to hide parts of yourself, where you choose to compartmentalize yourself, where you choose to present a version of yourself that is not the true and whole version of yourself because you think that the true and whole version of yourself wouldn't be accepted or would cause the relationship to break down, that is an act of violence against your inner child. You are telling the vulnerable, most in need part of yourself, you don't matter to me. I am going to sell you out so that I can get this other person's approval. And that is going to wreak absolute havoc on your self-esteem long-term, right? The relationship that you need to protect above and beyond any other relationship in the world is your relationship with yourself and that vulnerable child inside of you. So ask yourself, can I have and maintain and preserve a really healthy relationship with my own inner child while in this relationship? Or am I gonna be that parent who tells the child you need to shut up and do what you're told so that mommy or daddy can get what they want and really notice what message you're sending to yourself 
if that's what you choose. Question three to ask yourself before going back into a relationship with an ex is, am I implying or promising anything that I know I can't deliver on? So there is a tendency, and I'd imagine this is especially the case for those on the anxious attachment spectrum, to be on their absolute best behavior when they're thinking about getting back into a relationship with someone. So let's say you know that in some ways you crossed your ex-partner's boundary. Maybe you invaded their privacy in some way. Maybe you became a little bit controlling and started wanting them to respond to you in highly specific ways that were not authentic for them and didn't give them the room they needed to be who they were. Maybe you were making accusations about them or placing expectations on them that you know they were not willing or able to meet. And going back into this dynamic, I think we always kind of know in our guts when we're lying a little bit to get what we want. And I think it's really important to take a moment or 12 and really ask yourself, am I right now being on my best behavior, but do I know because I know myself that when I get back into this dynamic and my wounds are triggered again, I'm gonna resort to the same old tactics of trying to keep someone close without being clear and precise about what I need and what my boundaries are. Am I saying, yes, it's fine that you need tons of space. I can totally do that for you and totally allow that in our relationship because you're desperate to get back into the relationship, but you know that six months, a year down the line, when they're taking the amount of space that they needed the last time around, particularly near the end, it's not gonna work for you. Are you making any promises that in any place in your gut, you know you're probably not gonna be able to keep? Are you acting in ways that you know you probably are not going to continue to act once the dynamic gets back into the swing of things and those wounds are coming up and those fears are coming up and those anxieties are coming up? So are you making any false promises to this other person about the ways in which you plan to behave this time around? And if so, are you recognizing that that is a boundary violation and that you are heading into a relationship on dishonest grounds and potentially wasting years of someone else's life in the process? Now, this doesn't mean that the needs you have are unreasonable, right? Maybe your partner truly is just not able to meet you in the place that you need to be in in order for a relationship to work. Maybe they just truly are not the right fit in that way, right? But there can often be this kind of idea in the minds of those who lean a bit more anxious that if my demands and if what I want are reasonable, then the other person should or has to give me those things. And I deserve to advocate for those things. And I deserve to demand that they're given to me. But at the end of the day, you're making the choice about who you're in a relationship with, right? So if the person that you are choosing to be with does not want to meet you there, it is not your right to have them meet you there, right? It is your right to walk away and find someone who's willing to meet you there. Or if you find that there's a pattern of your needs not being met, it might be time to re-examine whether you are coming into romantic relationships with the appropriate level of independence or the appropriate level of self-regulation or the appropriate level of leaning on your partner versus leaning on friends and community for support, right? So you just want to make sure that if you are going back into this dynamic, you are not doing it under any false pretenses. And I think we always know in our gut when we're doing that. I have unquestionably done this, right? You want to get your foot in the door, you just maybe feel desperate to have that person's love and attention and affection back but you kind of know inside of yourself and the part of you where you're honest with yourself that as soon as your foot is back in that door, you're gonna crack it open wider and wider and wider and six months later, you're gonna be exactly back where you started. So really try to sit with yourself and ask yourself that question with honesty and do yourself the favor of deeply examining whether or not you want to go back into a dynamic where you know you are potentially gonna resort to old unhealthy coping mechanisms. Is that the healthiest thing for you? And is it respectful of the other person's time and autonomy? Question four to ask yourself before going back into a relationship with an ex as an anxiously attached person. Am I fulfilled outside of this relationship? And if not, am I looking for this relationship to fill some sort of hole that I have in another area of my life? So this is a particularly important one to ask yourself if you were the one who broke off the relationship the last time around. I think it's not uncommon for those of us who are insecurely attached to have this idea in our heads that if this relationship doesn't meet my needs, 
then I have to go find a different relationship that does. And then if you, let's say, try out a few more relationships and they also don't meet your needs, there can be this idea of, well, I might as well go back to the best I found so far, right? Not realizing that the best you've found so far is not the best you're ever going to find. And sometimes the reason you're not finding better is because you haven't really taken the time to build up a life that you're satisfied with outside of the relationship, right? And the reason that these relationships are repeatedly going wrong might be because you are looking at them as a means of fulfilling something in your life that you actually can't get out of a relationship. That maybe you can only get out of having a meaningful career that you love. That you can maybe only get out of having a deep, fulfilling sense of independence and autonomy and empowerment in your life. That you can maybe really only get out of having deep, honest, authentic, connected community relationships. And until you have those things outside of a relationship, it's going to be really difficult to thrive within one because you might be putting undue pressure on the relationship itself. So this is an important one. Really spend some time with it. Ask yourself, am I going back to this because I don't know how to meet needs within myself? Or am I going back to this because I'm pretty happy and satisfied with my life and now I truly see this person as someone who I could have a healthy partnership with? and who I could do life side by side with. Does not mean getting back together and filling these giant emotional holes we have inside of each other with a partner. It means, will my life be more or less the same with this person? They'll just be around more and add some things to a life that is already pretty good and pretty fulfilling. If so, that's a pretty good green flag that maybe it is time to get back together. Maybe you really have done that work. But if the answer is, and again, you need to be really honest with yourself here, no, I am not coping very well on my own, and this person looks like a life raft in the sea that I'm drowning in, that isn't necessarily the best motivation to get back together, right? This is one of those situations where the metaphor sink or swim applies really aptly, right? Sometimes we have to put ourselves in those positions where we don't have a safety net, we don't have a person to run back to, we don't have a fallback in order to not fall back. Right? In order to actually learn to swim and to build the skills that we have been outsourcing probably for a long time. Maybe this is your opportunity, right? Question number five to ask yourself. Do I deeply understand how and why things are going to be better this time around? So those with an anxious attachment wound tend to have something called a magical future fantasy, which means there can be this process of kind of dissociating into the fantasy of a magical future where everything is working out and there are no problems and you and your partner are super happy together. Maybe you have a family, maybe you are traveling to exotic destinations together, but not really having a step-by-step -step plan of how to get there. So when you think about your future with your partner, instead of just slipping into this beautiful fantasy, which is very tempting, right? Really sit down and think what steps does it take to get from where we are right now to that place? And you really have to look at what problems are in the way. If you really struggle to resolve conflict, it's unlikely that in five years you're going to be having an idyllic family situation. It's likely that in five years you're still going to be having a ton of conflict and now maybe your kids are going to be in the mix. So you need to look at what needs to tangibly happen and how you can take steps starting today towards that happening in order to build yourself into the place where that future actually has a ground under it. So this means you need to be able to look at things realistically, point out and name where the problems are, and then figure out are we both on the same page when it comes to working our way through these problems. When I bring these things up, when I bring these steps that we would need to take to get to where I want to go to up with my partner, are they happy to work on those things with me? Do they share that vision of a future? And are we able to talk openly about whether or not we can take the steps together to get there? And if the answer to any of that is no, then it's possible you're actually taking steps further and further and further away from that fantasy. Because it's like you're just driving in the opposite direction, right? The further you go down a road with someone who isn't willing or wanting to work with you in the direction of the plans and goals that you have for the future, the more time you are wasting both yourself and someone else's, the more energy and emotion you are investing in a situation that isn't necessarily bringing you closer to where you wanna go. And look, I'm not saying that every relationship has to have the end figured out right at the beginning, right? In a healthy and secure partnership, you figure a lot of that stuff out as you go 
and in context. So you figure out the next step based on what makes sense for the step that you're on. But you have to make sure that you're both clear about which step you're on from the get-go. Which problems do you have right now? How are you going to work on those right now? And then what are you wanting to work towards or build on after that problem gets resolved? And if you don't have the answer to this, it might also be worth spending some time with yourself and really figuring out what are my partnership goals? What does a healthy, happy, communicative relationship look like to me? And what's been the thing that's in the way of that for me in the past? And you don't get to take the easy way out here and say, all of my past partners have been narcissists. Okay, so the problem in the way is that you are very attracted to narcissistic partners. And that's the thing you need to fix before going into the next partnership, right? How do you recognize the green flags of an emotionally available person? And how do you develop the communication skills that will allow you to stay in a partnership with an emotionally available person? So before going back into a relationship with someone you've already tried things with, make sure you're really thinking about what type of future you're trying to build and what the realistic steps are for getting there. And is this person a good companion on that journey for you? Or do they have a totally different vision of the future? Nobody owes anybody a certain type of relationship. Relationships are negotiated openly between people. And so if this person can't give you what you feel like you deserve, consider finding someone who has more similar standards for what you think that romantic partners owe each other, right? There's no right or wrong here. There is just what everyone is willing to agree to. So make sure if you are thinking of getting back together with an ex, make sure that you're entering back into the dynamic with clear and explicit agreements about the things that really matter to you, rather than dissociating from those things, telling yourself you'll figure it out later, and letting your inner child just flail around panicking and full of anxiety with every passing day that goes by when you are not listening to what he or she wants. All right, that's all I've got for today on things you should consider and spend some time with yourself asking yourself before getting back together with an ex if you identify as someone who uses anxious attaching strategies. Let me know in the comments if this is a situation you have found yourself in over the years, if you are chronically in and out of on again, off again relationships, or if that hasn't really been a challenge for you. And if it has been a challenge, which strategies or which questions have you asked yourself that have helped you to lessen that dynamic and helped you find more satisfaction in the relationships that you're in or more satisfaction with your life outside of relationships? As always, I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and your inner children, and each other, and I will see you back here again really soon.